we have here today uh, uh, Margaret Tompkins, who was uh, Professor Girard's uh, former secretary at Stanford University. And I distinctly remember Margaret uh, when I walked into her office to make an appointment to see uh, Professor René Girard the summer of 1992. We were in the trailers um, in, at Stanford. And so, uh, Margaret, let me start off by asking you, when was the first time you heard of Professor René Girard? And uh, when did you start working with him? Uh, and well, it, it would have been 19, I think he came to Stanford in 81. I, I hadn't heard of him before he came to Stanford. I, I wasn't familiar with, um, you know, French philosophers and theoreticians and it was when he came. I think I was department secretary at the time, and um, it was a big deal. He came, and um, you know, I but I he had another person helping him with his administrative work, so I didn't really get to know him until I came back two years later after having been on maternity leave, and um, then I that half time position working for him opened up, which was perfect for me because I was, um, I was taking care of a small child and that was all I wanted to work. That was great. So how did he strike you as a person, as an individual, given the fact that he was such a prominent uh, theoretician and, and thinker? Well, he's, you know, he's a very impressive person. Um, a large person in every sense of the way. I mean, um, and, uh, but no, I mean, he struck me as a, a genius, um, a person who had thoughts, had, had, a, had that ability to take human phenomena of different sorts, turn it and look at it in a different way, a completely different way from other people. Um, which was a little bit in, intimidating because I felt like I was kind of, you know, the small town girl from Northern California who really didn't understand. I really didn't understand what those people that I was working with, um, you know, Professor Shihar, Professor GP, all those people were really discussing. Right. And you also uh, worked with Sepp Kumbrecht as well, I, I remember. Yeah, I actually worked with um, Sepp until my retirement in 2014. Okay, and uh, what kind of a uh, what kind of a personality did, did he have? Uh, was he humble, in your opinion? Was he down to earth, or was he? Uh, yeah. Um, yes, I think he was. He was he was quite down to earth and and humble, um, <clears throat> and yet he had this sort of slight lightness which with, with which he sort of took everything at the same time i mean except for except for his work um and he was a little bit he was very much his own man he was a little bit distanced from the internecine politics and things that go on around people you know um he really that didn't interest him he was interested in his work and what other people had to say and their thoughts around it. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. You didn't want to fall into mimetic dynamics with other people, mimetic rivalry and mimetic no. and that kind of no, thing. No, he definitely would, would not engage in that way that, that I could see. He really didn't. Right. Um, do you have uh, uh, any uh, preference of any of his works that you like? One of, any of his books that you like the most? Well, I mean, I, I think I really like the Shakespeare book because I worked on that book um, oh. and retyped it. But um, Deceit, Desire in the Novel, and of course, Violence in the Sacred. I mean, those are huge, life-changing books. Not that I understood everything, but they're amazing. Yeah, I, I appreciate um, all of them very much as well. So I like, in fact, the, the first time I started talking to him, it was with his Shakespeare book. And started right, with that's what he was working on at the time. I, I would really like to read Things Hidden, which I've never read, the book that he did with uh, 
Professor, uh, I mean, Dr. Gourlion. I've never read that one. And, and at least according to Cynthia Haven's uh, uh, biography, it, it is, um, it, it reveals a lot of things about all of the other books. I mean, right. that sounds silly, but anyway. What about uh, uh, your own personal interaction with him? What kind of uh, interaction did you have with him? What did you call him in all these years? How many oh, years? Well, I always called him Professor Shihar. Wow, that's Yeah, that's I always, we had a, you know, it was a formal office relationship, even though the Jars came to dinner sometimes at our house and we went to parties at their house and there were, you know, meetings following conferences that I helped to organize and things like that. So okay. we socialized a little bit and I, and um, I met his children and, but I, we weren't close friends, close, close friends who saw each other all the time. I, I did see him at the office all the time. Right. But not outside. Right. Um, can you share with us some of uh, your memories, one or two good memories that you have of him? <laughs> I mean, I do have a, a lot of good memories. Um, all, I think pretty much all of my memories of Professor Jar are, are good. Um, we worked together all those years that we were, it was, I think, seven years. We were in those dreary trailers with no, we, we had an office with no windows. And I remember, um, he worked on, and I can't remember this computer. Was it an IBM? It was a big, ex enormously expensive computer that uh, the, the first type of computers that Stanford was acquiring for the faculty. And um, we, we were always, he was always running out of space on those, those floppy disks, you know? and having to replace the floppy disks. <laughs> we were kind of obsessed with floppy disks and their space. <laughs> and it would get, you know, it would get complicated to have to, con to have to work on materials that were being produced on those things. I mean, that's so silly, but I, I do remember those things. He, I don't think, he didn't come in and hang around in the trailer as much as he did when we were in the building. The trailer was, pretty unwelcoming and I think everybody wanted to avoid going in there. <laughs> that's true, that's true. That, 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 that's exactly what happened with us when we started talking. We quickly shifted to meeting at uh, Tresider Coffee House and that's where we ended up doing our discussion and study. So that, that was much more pleasant than a windowless office inside of a right. mobile home basically. <laughs> right. um, do you have any other memories? Of, did you ever invite him to, to your church at one point? did. He came and spoke to my church once, which was extremely nice of him. He was also friends with, he was really close friends with Byron Bland, um, and uh, who also attends the same church. And he was very nice to come. And, um, but I can't remember the topic that he spoke on. But he did come to our adult study at 9.30 to 10.30. And was he well received? Did people understand yes. what you're talking about? Yeah. I'm not absolutely sure. I hope so. Okay. All <laughs> right. Very good. Um, do you have any other memories you'd like to share with us? Um, I, I mean, I, I know how much how much, what a good time he had when Michelle Serre would be here and they would come in together. And um, it was, um, it was a, it was a very special time at Stanford, but I don't, I mean, I think Rene Jahar was very much, you know, larger than life. And I think it's hard to sum him up in a few words. I was, I was very pleased to be working for him as I was, to be working for SEP afterwards, uh, Professor Gumbrecht. Right. So I felt like I had a really interesting, I mean, for secretarial jobs, I had had really boring secretarial jobs and working for people like Rene Jihar and Hans Gumbrecht was not boring. Right. <laughs> so I felt very, very privileged. Right. And I met all these wonderful, wonderful people that I'm 
you know, still somewhat connected with. Wonderful. And you mentioned something about a note that Martha Girard wrote you. Yeah, she wrote me a really nice note and she said something, something very nice. She said, I'm sure you know that your name was always spoken with reverence by Renee and everyone else who worked with you. I know all of, all of the things you did for him uh, to make his life easy. He was never better cared for either before and certainly not after you. So that was very, very nice. That, that's wonderful. That is very wonderful. But, uh, it made me feel very, very good about the years I spent because you, you can't always tell, you know, what your own work means to other people, especially if it's administrative. You're, you're a cog in a wheel, you're keeping things going, you're making sure that stuff doesn't get forgotten. And up until, up until my retirement, I, I had files with labels written by Rene Girard in my desk drawer because um, they, were, they were very distinctive. His handwriting was distinctive. And I thought, why change him? When I look at that, that file with a salmon label on it, I know what it is. <laughs> it is silly, but, you know, just kind of little things like that. He always gave us lovely, lovely gifts at Christmas, and he was very generous in every way. Right. And you also mentioned he didn't like to go to conferences. No, especially not conferences involving a huge amount of travel. I mean, um, once uh, the local cover group started up in California, those were a little bit easier to get to generally. People would come to him. But um, yeah, I think he just found it, it took time away from what he was really interested in. Even though at conferences you do share your thoughts and with other people. And, but I think he, as he got older, he was um, not as keen on the traveling part of it. Sure. And being sense. away from Martha and the family and You're sure. all of that. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Very good. Uh, okay, Margaret, thank you so much for taking the time to share your thoughts and memories on Professor René Girard and uh, really appreciate it. Uh, so you're very welcome. You. And, you're, uh, you're welcome, Babak. I hope it, the film comes together very well. Thank you, appreciate it. And uh, hope to see you sometime soon. It was good to see you. I hope so. If we ever get out of our houses here, that would be great. <laughs> it will, it'll come to an it'll, end. Yeah. It'll come to an end, uh, so we don't have to worry it about will. that. It will no, come that's end. true. Okay, take care, Babak. Very okay. nice to talk to you. Okay, God bless. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.